We're talking to Chris Krameyer, President and CEO of Beyond Housing, also heads up the 241 Initiative. Chris, you deal with, um, I think we could define them as vulnerable communities even in the best of times? Well, Jim, I think you, you described it um, accurately. There are clearly many, many uh, members of our community here in the boundaries of Normie Schools Collaborative that in normal times, um, things are difficult and tough um, and making ends meet is really difficult. And the challenges with the weight of poverty on your shoulders every day um, are many. Um, so you add a global pandemic on top of it, um, great economic dislocation that we've seen in such a short period of time um, it's going to cause even even more pain and suffering. Uh, and quite frankly, there's just a lot of fear in the community right now. What are you hearing from folks who often will turn to you for help? Well, the first thing is, is like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Right? I've just lost my job like instantaneously. Right. Not much notice, not anything. Right. Um, significant portion of our community works in the, in, in the retail space. And so many of those retail businesses were just shuttered quickly. Um, and then a, a, another big portion of our um, community works in the health space, but it's not the necessarily in the hospital space, but home health care and a number of other places that have also been hit hard from an economic standpoint. So the worry is well, how am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to buy food for my family? So, um, yes, there's a lot of talk about, you know, money is coming and Congress is doing stuff. But, you know, our folks are saying, look, I, I'm going to need help tomorrow because I, I got laid off a week ago. Um, and I don't have any, any dollars coming in, and I literally live paycheck to paycheck with little or no savings. So, you know, this uh, whole lot of us are, you know, middle class woes, right? Oh, my, my pension account, my, four, my 401k. Oh, I got to get more toilet paper at the store, right? Well, those are, you know, uh, issues of privilege versus in real life. What we're hearing is how can you help me literally within the next week's time? Yeah, and how can organizations, nonprofits um, like you help those people? Do you have the resources? Well, so we have some short-term things we can do because we do have resources in place to do small things, right? We already had some funds for rent assistance and utility assistance, but you know, it's a drop in the bucket in terms of what the need is going to be. Um, we are working with the Normie Schools Collaborative, dr uh, dropping off uh, food every day uh, at the kids' bus stop. Uh, every child gets um, a, a, a breakfast and a lunch. Again, not, not magic, but, but again, works. Um, yesterday, we bought uh, $10,000 worth of gift cards to Save-A-Lot. There are three Save-A-Lots um, in our community. So, so that's on the front side. Clearly, we know that whether it's the St. Louis Community Foundation, the United Way, other philanthropic partners of ours are going to be providing resources to meet um, emergency and basic needs here um, in the region. The question is how quickly... Uh, can they get to us? And how quickly can we turn them around and get them to the families um, who live in our community? And then a couple of these kind of interesting things, right? So one, we know um, that 3.3 um, million folks uh, applied for unemployment insurance across the country um, uh, in the last week. So what that means is we're going to paralyze uh, the state's capacity to respond to folks. So while that may be great that the Congress passed a law um, that gives you a supersized unemployment benefit, if it takes the state of Missouri, you know, a month to process all the ones that came to them, that's not going to, again, do you a lot of good in the immediacy. Also, what we do know is that um, to get that $1,200 check that individuals are going to get, and a majority of, of the folks who live in our community will be eligible for that, um, they're going to get the money to you quickly um, if you had a bank account routing number uh, on your most recent tax return. We know a significant portion of our community uh, don't have bank accounts um, for a whole host of reasons, good or bad. So what they've said is, uh, if you don't have a bank routing number, it could be several months before you get that $1,200 check. And I only mentioned those two things in case anybody's thinking, well, hey, didn't we just commit a whole bunch of money to help folks? Yes, but it could be a long time coming before folks who need it today will actually see it. So in the interim, what are we doing as a region to make sure families don't, don't struggle mightily um, because literally they have no income? Right now we're talking about the the economic impact, the personal impact, we haven't even talked about what might happen if the number of cases uh, really begins to spike. But we'll check back with you later and see how things are going. But Chris Kramer, thanks for joining us, President and CEO of Beyond Housing. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it.